So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about why Gen Z is against marriage. I've noticed that every single time I make a video dealing with baby mama culture, single parenthood, being a teenage mom, or referencing any of those nuances, there is a lot of comments that speak about how marriage is not something that young people should be striving for, let alone glorifying. I actually never thought that I would grow up and live in a world where everything that I've known is contrary to the way that I was raised. It has been the biggest shocker and maybe letdown of my life that now that I'm 25 years old and I thought that I would be living a life where the majority of people my age are striving in their careers, striving in their families, and striving to build their lineage with the small time that we have on earth. And I feel like it's just the complete opposite. One of the things that I've noticed is that my generation has this pushback against marriage. Now I can totally see why. I mean, the examples that we get to see of a marriage on a public spectrum don't really exemplify what we think marriage is supposed to be. When you're looking at all of the celebrities who have normalized infidelity and all of the shows that prove that side chick culture is alive and well, and all of these women that have testimonies about being unhappy or miserable in their marriages, of course, it's gonna turn a lot of people off. And then when you bring in the aspect of having children and the assumed notion of having children within a marriage, we see that more and more young people are just having babies within a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship or not even that. So of course, it's gonna make people People detach from the idea of marriage. Hookup culture, sneaky links, and overt sexualism has now told young people that it's kind of okay to be willy-nilly with your cooter cat and your plump pickle. And there's this new mindset that tying the knot isn't really worth it because the knot can get unraveled. So I do see why Gen Z thinks this way. However, I think because of my upbringing and a lot of things that I've observed within this thought process, I'm still in favor of marriage. But I have noticed that there's a huge pushback, even in a lot of my comment sections, and I've noticed this over the past year or so. So I just wanted to talk about this because I've never talked about marriage in regards to young people and why the idea of it isn't revered as it was decades ago. And I think it would be a really good conversation for people who are pro-marriage and people who are anti-marriage to express their thoughts. So I've broken this video down into one overall main talking point. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So my one and only talking point is why Gen Z is against marriage. So for all the reasons I stated above, I think that's why. I think the perception that this generation has of marriage is not really what it's all caked up to be. Divorce rates are at the highest they've ever been. The normalization of cheating and infidelity and having a sneaky link has really plagued the mindset of young people. And accountability is definitely at its lowest. I mean, when it comes to relationships as it is, before you even get to the altar, we're seeing a lot more destructive behavior between two people in a relationship that we kind of aren't surprised by anymore. When I hear that somebody cheated, it's not as shocking. When I hear that women are getting in relationships solely for money and clout and attention, it's not that shocking anymore. When I hear that men are channeling their inner Hannah Montana and living a double life with two different women, it's not that shocking anymore. And social media as well as television has programmed us to visualize all of these things, which in turn has institutionalized young people to be against commitment. I think the issue here is commitment and this whole idea of FOMO. And FOMO stands for fear of missing out. And I believe that because we are the generation that has technology interwoven into our daily lives, being able to instantaneously connect with somebody who lives halfway across the world and being exposed to different types of men and women who we find attractive just with a handheld device puts a lot of young minds in a state where commitment is not a priority. And this generation definitely has a decrease of our attention span as well. But even if commitment isn't a priority, it's become more difficult for young people to want to commit to anything because we have so many options available for us. So that also alludes to why we see things that may hinder the social perception of certain demographics. And you know, I usually speak for black women, but hinders our perception because we are now okay with striving for being a baby mama versus striving for simply having a committed relationship. And that is even before having a marriage. Obviously there are phases that lead up before somebody is married. You can be friends and then boyfriend and girlfriend or girlfriend and girlfriend or boyfriend and boyfriend. Then you're engaged. So you have a fiance and then you make it to the alter. But within that timeline, commitment is the issue as to why people aren't getting to that final stage. And then of course, a slew of other things, it could be finances, temptation, and just life as it is. But I feel like people make this argument that back in the day, our grandparents and maybe our parents were putting up with certain behaviors that are against marriage just to say that they were married. And I do agree with that because back then, the social climate in regards to marriage was that that is what everybody should be looking forward to, trying to do, and trying to maintain. And I'm pretty 
sure that there were many marriages in which two people weren't compatible, the two people really weren't committed, but because of the time, you remained in it because it was more shameful to be a divorced man or woman than it was to be unmarried. I kind of feel like both of those things, being divorced and being unmarried, may have held the same weight, but I see how quitting your marriage would read back then. So when you fast forward to 2023, and I see comments that say things like, a marriage doesn't prevent single motherhood, or a marriage is not everybody's goal, or marriage really doesn't matter, or a marriage is just a piece of paper, I do understand some of the pushback. However, we all know that I am pro-marriage. I come from a two-parent household with parents that have been married for almost 35 years, and so my perception is different. But I am a young person living in the now, and I think the real issue is respect is out the door and commitment is out the door. Even in a relationship between a guy and a girl who are just boyfriend and girlfriend, a lot of times if the relationship is somewhat rocky, it's usually because of commitment issues and respect issues for one another. And like I said, social media, TV shows, and a lot of hip hop artists have pushed a narrative that it's either F beaches and on to the next, having a side chick and having a main girl, having sexual relations with a man just for the benefit, being with a man for what he has or who he is, and then some. And then you wonder why young people don't want to get married. Society is basically telling everybody that commitment is not important, benefits override love when you're looking for a partner or dating someone. And because we are such a sexual generation and have no problem publicly displaying it, the temptation from both genders is very high. Now, I want to touch on the idea of marriage not preventing single motherhood. Let's be real nothing prevents single motherhood. But when we're talking about young people, the mindset is maybe a baby will make our relationship better. Maybe a baby will make him stay. Maybe a baby will mend my childhood trauma of being abandoned or feeling like nobody loves me or feeling as if I have nothing to live for because I'm growing up in a household where it's either I'm raised by a single parent or there's a lot of instability or I'm financially inadequate or whatever. Statistically, most single mothers come from a single parent household. So in most cases, it's a repeated cycle. Of course, I'm not saying that if you come from a two-parent household, you're not going to end up a single parent. But I'm saying that the statistics in most cases that the idea of a mother who had a child out of wedlock is something that your mother did and your grandmother did and maybe even her mother did. So like I said, nothing prevents becoming a single mother. But in my opinion, your approach to dating, your approach to selecting a partner, your approach to having standards, your approach to guarding your womb, your approach to commitment does lower your chances. I also feel like celebrity examples have lowered what marriage is supposed to be. When somebody as affluent and established as Rihanna is technically a baby mama, of course that's going to influence a lot of people to think that there's no point being committed in a marriage. And I think to each their own, I don't agree with it, but that right there is most definitely a reason why a lot of people aren't too keen on marriage. Even when I talked about Kiki Palmer being pregnant, I love Kiki. I've been supporting Kiki since I was a kid. However, when you put out the narrative that you're not really as focused on prioritizing the commitment you have with your sexual partner prior to welcoming a child, you're still putting yourself at risk for it not working out when the ultimate commitment is on the table. And of course, both Kiki Palmer and Rihanna will be financially able to provide for their child. Nobody is negating that. However, their actions directly influence a lot of young people's choice to not go the full nine yards. See, there's this argument that a lot of people like to put in my comment section as if pushing marriage is saying that you can't end up a single mother. And that's false. I've never said that and never will. But stop ignoring the fact that there are ways to lower your chances. Of course, anybody can do anything. People can switch up. You could have a great guy who is committed and dedicated and financially comfortable and he acts that way for years and then one day he doesn't. Of course that can happen. However, we can't start to allow young people to lose hope in marriage and commitment because of that. Especially when statistics show that children being raised in a two-parent household perform better in school, in social studies, and financially. And when the stereotype is pushed on black women that these are the baby mamas whose children end up being deemed illegitimate, oftentimes struggle with school, and oftentimes may stray away from what is considered being a good kid. I don't want black women to feel that you shouldn't be striving for commitment just because marriage is now being plastered to look like something that can't save you from being a single mother or having a failed relationship. Before you even get to marriage, all of that can happen. But a marriage isn't permanent. A baby is. So you have to choose wisely when you're approaching it. A lot of us women will spill out the facts that marriage is not foolproof and that there's so many examples of people being miserable in marriage. However, nobody ever wants to confess that more times than not, that's the reality for people who chose the wrong guy. Like, let's be real. Most of the women who sit up here and say that marriages are this and that are thinking about it in the lens with a man who isn't even worth marrying in a lot of cases, or he does not have the tools to maintain a healthy family because either that's his background or he's in an industry in which that commonly does 
doesn't happen. Like we see so many rappers and athletes and entertainers and their narrative is that they all cheat. They have multiple women and the only perks that they have are financial and maybe the social. But women still go for them and then wonder why they end up with two kids, divorced after a few years and trying to pick up the pieces when in most cases the red flags were there prior to the marriage. And I'm not saying that all athletes and all rappers and all entertainers are incapable of being faithful and good husbands because that would be a lie. But what I am saying is when young people are looking at these public figures and a lot of young people are living vicariously through them, they're also going to emulate that behavior and try to strive for the regular guys that kind of give off the same appeal as these famous people. And if we're being real, there's a lot of young people dating for perks and benefits and not dating for foundation, love, commitment, and extending the lineage. That's why I said all of this is a mindset thing. And commitment to me is the basic point because I think that is really what is lacking versus anything. It doesn't matter what title you put you could be married you could be boyfriend and girlfriend you could be engaged if both parties let alone just one don't have the mindset for a healthy commitment it's not going to work no matter what level you are at in the relationship and because we're seeing these beginner stages which is pretty much the boyfriend and girlfriend era fail because of lack of commitment lack of goals lack of effort and this idea of FOMO that's why people now think that marriage isn't worth it and just briefly touching on the idea of FOMO I think that pertains to a lot of young men a lot of men have a fear of missing out on a better girl. A girl with a more voluptuous body, a girl with a better social following, a girl that is deemed better than the girl that he has. And I've talked to a lot of my cousins, especially those of us who are 25 and up, and a lot of them have said that they just have this fear of missing out on the right girl by settling down with a certain girl. And I think it's really because this generation is living with a handheld device that at any given time exposes us to an array of people who we fantasize about being with or getting to know or just trying to find somebody who emulates all of these people. And with the social tailoring that many social media users view, of course marriage is going to be put on the back burner when Instagram and TikTok and all of these shows on streaming keep showing us examples of why marriages are failing. People have to be better all around, both men and women. I think the reason why marriages are failing or people aren't looking forward to them is because people think that they can do better and get better elsewhere due to the fact that we're living in a microwavable society that moves very fast, attention spans are down, morals are gone, and commitment is seen as a taboo. I may be wrong, but I feel like for some guys, it's almost a rite of passage for them to cheat on their girlfriends. Like it's almost like men look at other men weird if they don't have a F boy era where they're sticking their willy in everything that moves. And then for the victims per se, or the women who have been cheated on or have been hurt so many times, it's harder for them to want to commit because you don't want to go into a marriage. And the mindset that some young men have is still present in that marriage. And you'll never know if your man is really done with that phase or not. And then on the flip side, because of the whole Nakers ain't ish movement has been so prevalent a lot of women have hijacked that it's now turned into biddies ain't ish and there's a lot of women standing in that and saying yes we're doing these men how they've done us for years we are now in the position to have that cake and eat it too we also have side dudes we also cheat back and we also want to experience having our way with men because historically a lot of women simply sat at home raised the kids maintained the household and let charles be out here sleeping with women at the easy rest motel that is 200 feet from their job if you know, you know. So I think that now that a lot of young women have adapted to what is technically a man's mindset, it throws off the status quo with why marriage is not being as revered. A lot of women are simply getting their lick back after decades of being done wrong. And I'm not in favor of that whatsoever, but I do see why women have been showing a lot of men that behavior, which let's be real, has been more prevalent in men than it has been in women. I think men and women cheat at the same level, but I do think that women are better at it. And I do think that men are more unapologetic about it. And all of these things can take place prior to a marriage and all of these things have been exposed for young people to consume and see the realities of a lot of different relationships and I think a lot of young people are just scared to be married they're scared to settle down because we don't know what may happen and we're now thinking like what if we go into something and it fails and that's a fair reservation to have but I think the side effects of a generation of people who don't want to be married or committed to one partner isn't going to result in something more positive than whatever else can happen the flip side to not being married is not a positive response because like I said, the statistics show that within child development and within personal development, a lot of that deteriorates when there's no stability within a unit of people. Whether you are a boyfriend and girlfriend or whether you're in a full-blown marriage. I do think that young people should be hesitant about marriage, yes, but I don't think we should be scared. I think because we have the resources and a little bit more transparency to see the climate of marriage, we just have to be better at it. Now that we know that in generations past, a lot of women were unhappy and Papa was a rolling stone, I think we just have to have better discernment versus 
being turned off to the idea of marriage as it is. I don't want this generation to put young children at risk of developing at lower rates just because we know that marriages can fail. We have been knew that. But I think it comes down to the individual people versus the idea of marriage. Marriage isn't the problem, people are. Marriage isn't the problem, this generation is. Marriage isn't the problem, your mindset may be the problem. I can't really tell anybody how to alter that. However, what I can do is encourage people to go into any commitment with the right intentions and really vet out whoever you're going for to make sure that you're compatible with them. I'm not married. I'm not even in a relationship. Hell, I've been celibate for going on three years. So I can't really give that type of advice. But from my observation, I think it's more or less a mindset thing than it is a marriage thing. Let me leave y'all with one last food for thought that was left by a commenter on my last video. She said, the highest honor you can bestow upon a man is giving him a baby. Why, you may ask? Well, okay, because you're carrying on his name, his bloodline, his dynasty, his legacy. Why are you giving such a privilege to a man who didn't see you as worthy enough to marry you and make you his wife before he knocked you up. You did all of that work carrying around his seed for 40 weeks. Doctor's appointments, prenatal vitamins, throwing up, constipation, stretch marks, weight gain, wobbling around, swollen feet, possible high blood pressure, hours in label, possible preeclampsia, possible vaginal tearing, possible C-section, possible epidural, possible blood loss, starvation while in labor, six weeks of postpartum bleeding, possible mommy pouch, possible breast sagging, possible C-section scar, possible hair thinning. Pregnancy alone can hinder a woman's capabilities of fully contributing to our livelihood. Let's not forget, if he decides to ride off into the sunset, the woman, more times than not, is responsible for bearing the majority of the load. That is why it is meant to marry before you carry. But no, we choose to have sex outside of marriage. Your husband will less likely abandon you pregnant than your baby daddy would. Have your father figures to help you vet a man of value and marry before you carry, and your likelihood of having to raise your child alone will diminish significantly. And and I'm not gonna lie y'all, she said her words. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, stream my new song, Ceremony. It's out on all streaming platforms. The link is in my description box. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. Say 34 feet cut, 30 in the deep cut, 20 baddies with me QTM, can't we up? 16 tops and bottoms, man, I went and got my teeth done. 10 minutes with him, now his 15 minutes is cut. Never ever make a nigga think that he up, cause you a queen and I'm a queen, now shout out to Latifa. Security in the back with her racket like Serena. Ex nigga crying, laughing him like a hyena. Like damn, what you saying daddy? Yeah, I know I got a fatty pussy talking to him, talk my shit, yeah, I be getting catty. Play with me, I bet you won't. Daddy on his chest and now he calling me a stethoscope. Pink fit, look thick, I'm looking good, incredible. Cut a nigga off, I'm coming through like a semicolon. Mansion in the motherland, December come, that's where we going. Body have my niggas frozen, niggas put my picture up and yeah, they go and get the lotion. I'm the one they check up on, feeling so lucky, getting green like a leprechaun. Run a few errands with the bag, with the checkers on it. Push it on the floor because it's mine and I'm stepping on it. Get the cheese and keep it wet, so yeah, he call me macaroni. Niggas on my line and now they begging me for matrimony. Detroit nigga, touchdown.